Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Iron Bark Podcast, and I am your host, Epion. Today, we're going to talk about neural peptides, skunk stripes, and the only known mammal to breed without penetration. So, let's just get into it. So, the neural peptide connectum of C. elegans, aka nematodes, as you may know them as, they're basically these microscopic worms, if you don't know. And uh, there was a paper written on them. And the first name on the paper was uh, Lydia uh, Ripple Sanchez. Uh, so I'm just going to take a quick blurb out of the, su- uh, the summary of the paper that uh, was written. Uh, Chemical synapses represent only one type of functional important neural connection. In particular, extrasynaptic wireless, in air quotes, uh, signaling by neuropeptides is widespread and plays essential roles in all nervous systems. So basically, if I'm going to put this simply, it was believed in the past that all sort of neural connections in your brain uh, through your nervous system happen between uh, two synapses passing information or like an electrical signal from one synapse to the other. This proves or this shows or indicates that there's actually much more nuance or there's much more we don't know about uh how our our nervous system works and that you know you can have a signal from far away or like a peptide being introduced or exposed and then another part of the body or another cell or synapsis or a different region picking up on that signal from way further away to uh transfer information or to indicate something to another part of the nervous system or body so it just goes to show uh there's a lot to learn about the human brain and our nervous system in general and this is exciting new information and and i want to see you know more information come out of this more studying into it and see where this evolves into uh there was plenty of articles written on this uh little paper and uh, a lot of them were like oh it's like wi-fi signals for the neural system and this and that and that's a bit you know sensationalized or whatever but i mean if you want to look like really far down the road it's not out of the realm of possible realities that it could achieve so that's super interesting super cool nematodes are always in the new cycle or the study cycle because they're just they're the most complete study thing out there so far because they're so simple but yet complex like uh, they're not as simple as simple could be uh so the next thing i want to talk about is stripes on skunks so Another thing that another paper that was written recently, sorry, I don't have the names in front of me, but essentially skunks that have less predators in an area will evolve or develop less pronounced stripes to signal to predators that, you know, they're lethal. They have like, I guess that like, you know, that stinky chemical formula ready for them if they get pounced on or whatever. So that kind of seems cool that that's a correlation between the stripes. I guess it's sort of like poisonous frogs in a way too, how they're very bright and beautiful looking and it's kind of a signal like i'm dangerous bro don't come near me so that's an interesting thing and then so i guess this was the first mammal to be found to breed without penetration and if you haven't guessed what it is by now it's a bat it's a serotine bat so basically this bat breeds much like you would expect uh or how we know birds to breed where they kind of just uh come together up beside each other where their uh, sexual organs, you know, touch each other, but they don't penetrate. And there's a sort of like an exchange of fluids. This bat, much similar, kind of just, you know, docks, you know, its penis into that area. It doesn't actually penetrate it. And it, uh, they, they were documented sitting there for up to 12 hours or something, but on average it was one hour. So I guess, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of suction on the female's end that takes in the semen and I don't know, maybe there's just like a constant flow or a pump or I don't know, like they didn't get into it in the paper. So I'm just, this is all speculating, but I'm assuming it's something like that. And anyway, that's much like how some birds will breed their cloclaeas or cloclea, Clo- cloco, I forget what it's called. Any, something like that. Coleca, is that it? They'll like just sit up against each other and they just exchange the fluid. So, I mean, maybe that's kind of like an emergent property of, uh, creatures with flight or you know or at least animals with flight so i guess maybe an emergent property for bats or something like that uh that basically covers all the nature and wildlife news for this week that that i found interesting i'm sure there's much more out there that you guys can you know sift through and get into and if there's ever anything you guys want to hear about just kind of like 
throw me a message just reply on any one of my like posts or one of my recent posts on x uh instagram it might be a little bit more difficult for me to see it i don't know dms and stuff typically get hidden and suppressed uh when i do check them i'll, I'll see stuff from like weeks ago from people i'm like how come i wasn't getting a notification from that or whatever so anyway i'm going to jump into some stuff to do with sort of the x platform since that's the newest platform i'm on and i've actually really been enjoying it and kind of like the community on there and it seems like now they're give me a sec here i'm just gonna take a sometimes i just ramble on i need a break i need a sip of water but uh there seems to be a a, a little bit of a decline in uh revenue for creators uh we're, they're getting paid less you know there's been uh, trouble with advertisers on there so here's some of my i don't i wouldn't call them creative ideas i'm sure many other people have these ideas as well uh, I've, I've seen these ideas shared you know on the platform before uh some of them i th you know you think you think of independently but who knows uh i'm sure x probably has like a catalog of what was said and when but anyway it doesn't matter so the first thing I would like to see is a shop tab. I think I've mentioned this in previous in a previous podcast, and I would like to see a shop tab for creators. So if I want to sell t-shirts or hats uh, to fans or people who enjoy my content, it'd be nice to just be able to have like, you know, X sort of do all the legwork for the processing and transaction part of it, where I'm just responsible for shipping it out. And then I think if X wants to make revenue off that, all they would have to do is take a percentage off each sale one part of it to cover the transaction fees associated with it or whatever infrastructure or you know people they have to pay as part of having this additional department but also like an additional part of that percentage is for a, a small profit revenue for them and that would help generate revenue for the platform and then you know help pay creators etc cetera, etc cetera, so on and so forth or the next thing i would want to see is video advertisement so much like when you go on youtube sometimes before the video starts if you don't have like the premium service you'll you'll be exposed to like an advertisement much like a commercial would be traditionally and if the video is long enough you might even get them halfway through the video or near the end of the video and i think that's something that's sort of like an advertising strategy that x should adopt right now it just seems like you get like the picture ads or whatever maybe you'll get a video ad like as you scroll through the feed or through like comment sections but uh, right now it doesn't have anything like in in the video itself embedded in the video where just like it times up and it queues up i know those are super annoying but it gives more options to an advertiser uh to advertise right it's like well yeah okay it's nice having a nice little picture to advertise you know kind of like a bulletin on you know through the feed but you know maybe i'd much rather have like you know my, my commercial run during a very popular video that gets like billions or millions of views I don't know if they could do billions yet, but millions of views. And th this, you know, it would just be like, and I think the benefit to that was that it would also mean that they would have to improve sort of like the video infrastructure of the website. So that it would be like better video search interfaces, you know, for like the location and consumption of these videos. So if I had a video tab on my profile as a creator, you could click on it and go, okay, here's all the videos that Epion's uploaded of all this wildlife content. Here it is. It's easy to find. It's easily digestible. Right now, if you want to go find my videos, I've taken upon myself to put them into my highlights tab. But let's say, you know, I don't put my podcast there, but what if I wanted to? And then all of a sudden, my the highlights tab's convoluted and it's like, mm, the people that enjoy my videos don't necessarily enjoy my podcast. So they kind of don't want to be bothered to sift through all the garbage they just want what they're looking for and they want it like now and easy to consume if you make it too convoluted then maybe they're not going to really enjoy it or want or bother to look for it or uh, the consume it so i think having that tab and especially when you go to like the main profile tab you, you get an assortment of stuff you get like all the comment posts all the like little blur posts i call them you know if you upload like a picture and like maybe you don't want to see what I'm writing about. Maybe you don't want to see like my long form articles. Maybe you don't want to see my pictures, my video or my podcast. You just want to see my video. So I think there should be a specific tab for people who want to consume that specific type of media. And it's just, it, it works best for the creators. It works best for the consumer and it's, it's good all around. And I think, you know, if it wants to be the everything app and it wants to compete with YouTube, it's going to have to adopt a lot of these um, sort of like formatting that YouTube has because 
YouTube is as big as it is and as successful as it is because it has a good format. It has a good layout, right? And it's uh, done through done this through trial and error, error through the years, right? So I wouldn't say I would say implement new and exciting things if they fit and if they work well and obviously you want to kind of be on the bleeding edge of you know different ways of showing media to people but there's also some things that are just showing the work and maybe that's a good starting point but uh another way they can increase revenue is through live streaming transactions so much like the live streaming platform twitch it allows individuals to buy subscriptions for others so let's say i'm in some big streamers uh stream and I'm a big fan of his, so I'm subscribed to him. I'm paying him monthly, but also like there's like a tiered system of like being a fan in their, um, you know, on their page. And you can increase your fan level by buying, you know, subscriptions for other people that are in the stream watching as well, but they're unsubscribed. And it might be only a dollar, but it's like, okay, I'm going to buy five people a subscription. Boop, 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 boop. I just gave out five free subscriptions because I'm supporting and then it kind of like pay- if you want to continue in that fandom or be like a moderator or whatever, there's a whole, I'm not too savvy with Twitch. I don't do Twitch, but from what I know on a very surface level, it's something like this. And someone that's way more versed into live streaming and Twitch could probably give you a much better explanation as to everything you can do to monetize it. I know they have like their own currency that's called like bits and you can buy bits and then there's a transaction. Like there's a whole thing that X can do as well. So there's tons and tons and tons of learn and take from the Twitch streaming platform that uh, X can implement on their live streaming platform. So there's also like when you're in streaming, you can buy digital effects such as sounds and graphics that pop up on the screen. So you can have someone playing a video game live streaming and then you you buy this thing for like five, 10, $15 and all of a sudden it makes like a big honking horn sound and it comes up on the screen, you know, Epion just donated $10 and then the streamer will see it and usually, you know, the unspoken rule is they have to acknowledge it say your name and kind of give you a shout out and go like oh thanks man and people enjoy that crap and i don't know why it's not it's not for me necessarily but i get it like i get that there's a market for it definitely right there's a demographic that enjoys it and you know if you could take a percentage off each sale of those things even if it was minimal and just very tiny at scale it would be very lucrative and a, a good revenue stream for the x platform so those are my top three recommendations for the X platform. Obviously it's going to take a bit of, you know, work to get those kind of features implemented into there and a lot of coding, but, uh, those are really good options there. They benefit the creators immensely. And once they have those, because the creators can make money off of it and then it's, they can also make money off it as a platform. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And these would be, I think the core ways to go about increasing revenue. So those are my recommendations. Um, I don't really have much else to say. This is going to be kind of a shorter podcast. I could go into some other stuff maybe, but uh, I think I'm going to try to do a spaces. Uh, X has this thing. It's kind of like Clubhouse where they do a spaces. I have to see if I can get a few friends involved if they want to kind of come on because I don't necessarily think if I just start one and start talking to nobody that it'll be entertaining, but it does I think it records so I can post it. So it is in a way it's sort of like a podcast, but it's exclusive to like X and I could just ramble on and talk about things on there. But uh, I think it's much more entertaining when it's a conversation and there's other people giving their opinions and stuff like that. So I'm going to see if I can do my first spaces, but I think I have to kind of influence a bit by getting some people I know uh, directly involved. And then uh, hopefully some people join and, you know, chime in and come up to the stage and talk and share their little stories and stuff like that it'd be super cool i think i really want to do like uh an imaginative one where like people come in with like bigfoot stories or like alien stories or ufo stories i think those are the best stories those are the campfire stories i want to do like a campfire that's what i want to do i want to do a spaces that's basically a campfire session where people tell their ghost stories their paranormal stories and i think that's super cool because those are the ones people like to hear and they like to hear a good one they don't like hear bad ones but if you hear like a good one that's kind of like oh that's creepy or that's freaky oh there's there's circumstantial evidence that that might be true holy crap that's cool anyway yeah that's it folks so i hope you enjoyed this episode of the iron bark podcast and uh, maybe I'll put out another episode. Maybe we'll do the spaces. Keep a lookout. Anyways, that's all. Cheers.